I'm uh, Giulio Alessandrini, and I'm the, um, the team lead uh, of the machine learning group at Wolfram. Uh, I came here through like some uh, uh, bit one road. Uh, I started from physics and then uh, doing some image processing. And then, you know, image processing is, is done more and more with neural networks these days. So I ended up doing, doing that. And, uh, and so I, I saw the, the beginning of this framework uh, because like friends of mine were, were working on this and I'm, I'm, uh, I'm glad I'll be able to introduce it to you. Um, so here we're go going to get a bit more, uh, um, I don't want to say technical, but like look at the um, concepts behind uh, the framework, hopefully uh, refresh some, some concepts. Okay. so. This talk is, is a very gentle, very uh, 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 slow paced, I hope, introduction to, to our neural network framework. Um, we are going to look at a um, few things specifically. So one I really like about is uh, how to see neural networks as uh, differentiable programs. Like, what does this mean? What it, what it implies? Um, we are looking at what it means to train a neural network and, and how it's done. We are going to solve some simple problems that will allow us to uh, basically get our hands dirty a bit and not do just, uh, just theory and, and, and talking. OK, so uh, like it, I, I like always to start with a quick introduction about the why. Like, why, why is it important to, to, uh, to be able to handle neural networks to understand them, to know what they can and cannot do, what they're useful for, um, and actually why why um, everybody's using them these days, or not really everybody, but why they are so widely used. Uh, well, I mean, I would say the whole thing started now, used to be like a few years ago, now it's like around, around like 10 years ago, uh, already at this point. Uh, it was a, a concatenation of uh, like a combination of factors, actually. Um, like there's a lot more digital data available. Uh, I guess big data is is now like an obsolete buzzword, but uh, it, it it was it was a buzzword for a reason. Um, we have a lot more uh, cheap, very cheap sensors. Like our phone is is a treasure trove of sensors. We have micro, microphone uh, cameras, the, the the two main ones, but uh, also people are starting to use more and more like other sensors, like positions and uh, like three D uh, imaging stuff like that. So like uh, the, the the availability of, of new data, the ability to produce data, is uh, much much greater than what it was before, and we have better internet. Uh, so all these data goes online together with social media, you know, there's a lot of pictures online, a lot of videos online. And, um, and this basically is uh, the backbone of machine learning yeah? because m machine learning is programs learning from data. It's programming using data. Like if the, the, you create a, a, a structure, a model, and you fill it in the, 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 the blanks using training data. So it's, it's essential to have a lot of data to, to, to begin with. And on, on the other side, uh, compared to, you know, like early applications of uh, artificial intelligence in the 60s, 70s, uh, we have much better hardware and software. So like recent, uh, like before, like uh, GPUs, but now even like uh, TPUs or like neural cores or whatever each, each brand is calling them. Yeah, we have a lot of very fast, dedicated hardware that parallelizes extremely well and is now specifically built to solve the, the, the arithmetical problems that are, lies behind these uh, neural network models. And there is software written on top of it like, that is, is able to exploit this hardware to, 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 to the most of its potential. So this, this makes it possible, basically, to have a, a space recognition running in your phone live you just you know like it, it used to take like first like massive computers then like a desktop computer now you just you know you you just point your phone at something but even even taking a picture and and the phone has already identified uh, 
you know, like key elements in the picture, like uh, people, like it, it waits for people smiling before taking the picture. And all, all, all of these, if it can be run, you know, like it's true that the phone is much more powerful, but it's also a lot more um, optimized the, the software running this. So um, all, all of this was like, a, um, as I said, the combination of events that make it viable. What it was before was like an interesting uh, uh, theoretical uh, um, solution that didn't have much practical use. Okay, so uh, this is like, you know, the, the, the factor that made it possible, but uh, why it is interesting to, to, to use neural networks. Uh, it's a peculiar programming paradigm. Like compared to writing classical, let's say, like rule-based um, software, uh, neural networks can be like custom built to solve a variety of problem and uh, uh, more and more they work uh, like end to end. Uh, end to end means that you know at the beginning of the of the neural network revolution, people were using these things to compute specific parts. So, for example, you you know you need to find faces in an image. So you first uh, uh, do some classical image processing. You extract like features using uh, a list of filters, you know, like derivatives, uh, and then you you inject some computation. And then you take the result and you do some some selection with that using again classical rules rule based methods to to filter out some results and stuff like that. So um, more and more people realize that this thing works best when you are able to you know shape it shape your problem so that you you feed in your data directly into a neural network and and you, or what you measure at the end is something close to the to the final result that you that you want. So basically, you can in a single optimization step, you can um, you can deal with the, with the every operation at once, and you don't have to you know you don't have things that you know you optimize the central part and then you need to tweak the beginning at the end and then you could need to go back to the central part again. So it's a single pipeline basically. Um, one nice thing about neural networks is it has very high high tolerance. So um, these models have like first. You know, tens of thousands and millions and like billions of parameters, and compared to, you know, classical uh, programming where you know like you you have a slight data corruption, you might get a different result, because you know it was sensitive to the specific values. Neural networks are not, you know, it's not very important if you if you know, if you change if you randomize a couple of of the parameters in a network, not much is going to change, by by design. Uh, same thing with the input, you know, like if you, if you take a picture of a dog and if you take like another picture of a dog very similar, if you did your, your, your training well, a neural network model will still say that that's a dog. Well, it, you know, you might have like a catastrophic failure uh, with, with a classical uh, program. Uh, another thing that ties very um, tightly with what I said before, is that uh, this thing this thing works well on dedicated hardware is very scalable. Like you have something that runs on a phone, but you can also have something that runs on supercomputers or like gigantic clusters of uh, um, of cards. And um, and on the other side, these things can be very big, but can be trained few examples at a time. So neural networks nowadays, you know, the similarity. I'm not even going to the similarity with the, with the brain too much because it's it's uh, it's not open for historical reasons, but it can be misleading. We we learn in a very different way compared to neural networks. And um, if I show you something a, a couple of times, you're you're able to to retain it. While well, neural networks are trained with millions of examples, billions of examples. Um, so it's very important. That compared to other methods, you know, you don't want to have to show all these examples at once. It would be impossible to 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 handle otherwise. Something like you know, like ChatGPT is trained on like almost you know the whole Wikipedia. Uh, oh, maybe Wikipedia will fit in memory. I don't know how big is Wikipedia now, but uh, there's uh, there's much more. There's videos, for example, you can train these models on videos, and of course, you cannot fit in any memory, you know all the hours of video on YouTube, for example. So it's very important that these models can be trained one step at a time. Um, and you know, last but not least, uh, 
uh, they became increasingly good programs. So for in, 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 in many tasks, uh, neural networks can perform better than humans. Uh, in some tasks, they perform better than, you know, like average humans. In some tasks, they perform better than experts. You've all seen like neural networks playing games and beating experts at different games, like more and more complex. So you know, the, the, the bottom line is that it works. Uh, not for everything, it's not, it's not like a panacea that can, you, know, you can throw any problem at it and it works. You need to shape the problem accordingly. Um, and, and yeah, it's not going to work on everything, but on, on, on a certain subset of problems, it works very well. And I think this makes it very interesting. So like, I put here like a, a bunch of, of uh, um, uh, like historical and current uh, areas where uh, neural networks mean like sort of take, taking overs. Some of them are like still, you know, they're becoming a bit like nuclear fusion, like always, always next year. Well, I guess nuclear fusion is only in 50 years, but uh, uh, there's like stuff like, you know, like image creation, image captioning, speech to text, text to speech, all this stuff, uh, like translation, like over the last like 10 years, 10, 10 years or so, all these things have been take, taken over by, by neural networks as an algorithm of, of choice to, to perform these tasks. 